hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Murphy. Uh, I'm actually from the Valley. I was born and raised here. Uh, I came to Pan Am for a couple semesters. I did some at SVC before I went up north to San Antonio. Um, what I, what I want to talk to you today is about what HP is doing with the uh, open source cloud or OpenStack itself. Um, has anyone here heard of cloud, OpenStack, Amazon? Not, not a lot, a little bit. Right, so cloud is kind of a buzzword in the industry. It gets used for a lot of, of, of labeling of any kind of technology, anything that's online or active or always on. Um, what I'm talking about specifically is infrastructure as a service, right? Startups, existing enterprise companies, um, small, medium business or large enterprise business need servers. Um, the traditional model of servers was you went out, you bought uh, racks of servers, you put desktops into it, or you put uh, you know, work basins, breadboards, uh, network switches, a lot of capital expenditure to get your infrastructure online and available. Um, that infrastructure depreciates in value over time. It creates a lot of, uh, of economic waste or IT waste, kind of what Lax was talking about. They have a lot of problems recycling that kind of hardware. Um, and then you have to hire a staff to manage. You have to have uh, engineering students such as yourself to manage this. Um, and then you have a problem with growth. It's very hard to grow physical resources past what you initially have. Um, you go out and you spend $200,000 on you know, 15 racks of servers, and you're, you're good and going. But you have a new project, and you need to put servers online. So you have to call up HP or Dell or, or you know, another H, you know, a, a computer manufacturer, and you have to ask them to ship you servers. And in that time, you're waiting, and you aren't able to move forward with your application. You're not you know, able to move forward with uh, your use case. This is some of the things that cloud is trying to solve for. Um, cloud is a way to take uh, a provider that runs a data center, like Hewlett Packard, and be able to take virtual machines from that provider. Right? So what HP enables you to do is to make an instant request for a small, medium, large, extra large range of server sizes and get that virtualized server instantly. So instead of having to call up you know, your manufacturer, your supplier, and say, give me a server, um, you just hit a couple of buttons in, in a web portal or in a CLI interface, and you have a server up in line. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So here's what. Uh, what our control panel looks like, kind of from the first login. What you see here is I have a couple of instances that I just popped past. Um, and this is a, a, a list of the instances that are running into my account. Now, these are all in uh, our US East data center, which is in uh, uh, Eastern Virginia, actually. Um, and these are all I, these are demo servers that I use for customers and to show kind of use cases and things going on. A couple of uh, uh, servers that I run for friends. Um, here's an example of the uh, you know a way that you would access it. Um, so this server's already been provisioned. It takes about 10 minutes to start up a Windows server. It takes about 30 seconds to start up a Linux server. Uh, you have kind of a graphical interface for it. This computer doesn't have the right software, so I'm going to switch over to mine. I'm going to show you connecting to a Windows desktop that is in my HP Cloud account. Just a standard remote desktop connection, just like you were you know, logging into a server inside of your data center or your rack. Now, so this, this server is completely hosted out of Virginia. It's billed per hour. So this is not a server that you have to build, maintain, manage, uh, pay somebody to upkeep, and it runs 24 hours a day. It sucks electricity 24 hours a day. Uh, this server I can turn on, off, snapshot, provision, backup. Uh, scale up, scale it down, and I can access it via sorry about that mobile applications as well. So if I'm away from my desktop or away from my computer and I need to get onto that box, which is under my HP Cloud account, I can log into that same computer here on my with just a standard RDP, uh, RDP client on my uh, on my cell phone. So managing these resources becomes a lot simpler as opposed to traditional IT. Uh, here's an example of. So that's an example of a Windows server. This is an example of a Linux server, which does anyone here have experience with Linux? Uh, kind of a show of hands. So Linux is an open source software. We were talking kind of the segue. We were talking about 3D printing, open source technologies. Um, this is something that's very big. So 90% of the internet is hosted on Unix-based systems, right? Networks, switches, routers, firewalls all run Unix-based OSs. Um, it is a large piece of the IT world or the enterprise IT world. Um, a lot of us are kind of used to traditional Windows desktops because that's what we grew up with, right? That's the first computer we had in our hands. 
Um, that's what we had in, at our universities and our schools. Um, but a big piece of enterprise IT is Linux. Um, so it's important to start paying attention to it now, to start getting education around it, to start learning how to work with it. Because when you guys start and graduate and start going to manage IT portfolios of larger companies, you're going to need to have some working knowledge of Linux. Because when they ask you to deploy a simple web server, you're really not going to do that on Windows. You're going to do that on Linux. You're going to do it on a CentOS box or a Linux box. Um, this is one of the easier ways to experiment and get into Linux instead of having to go to Best Buy and buy a you know, $800 box and install Ubuntu on top of it. You can kind of come to HP Cloud and sign up to, for an account, spin up a server, log into it for the uh, amount of time that you need it, um, and play with it and you know, get used to using it. To do that, we have a freemium tier. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not on the white box. Uh, this is our website, hpcloud.com. And as I said, what we're we, we're uh, bringing to market or, or, or kind of bringing to the public is OpenStack technology. Um, OpenStack is the open source uh, differentiator between some of the more proprietary markets. Does anyone know what the proprietary cloud providers are? Mm -mm. You should. VMware and uh, Amazon, S, uh, Amazon EC2 or S3 are the, the proprietary providers in this public cloud market. Now, they're a little bit older. They've been in the industry for a while. They're very feature-ridden. Um, they're very popular with startups. People who don't want to put out a lot of capital expenditure tend to just put their credit card into an EC2 account, spin up F, you know, 15 servers to develop their applications, and then they go to market. Um, the problem with this is those providers are proprietary. The same problem that you're having with catting when people, is try, you know, when people are trying to protect their intellectual property, it reduces innovation. It doesn't allow community developers to get in and, and improve the product. So if anyone remembers what was going on with the browser wars, right? So the first browser uh, anyone here had experience with was probably Internet Explorer, right? Uh, Netscape Navigator was mine. Um, you know, AOL, the browser from AOL back in the day is one of my, my favorite. <coughs> but the thing about Internet Explorer and, and Netscape Navigator and where they failed in the open source race was that community developers couldn't get in there and start fixing things or start tuning them to the way they wanted or developing plugins to do things um, above and beyond what the browser was doing itself, right? You had a fixed amount of developers that were working on a product, which was a good product, um, but they couldn't keep up with community demand. <coughs> Firefox came to market um, as one of the first open source, uh, open source um, browsers, and it really blew the market away. So does anyone here still use Internet Explorer? A little bit. I have to. HP. <laughs> HP has a couple of tools that every now and then I have to log into an Internet Explorer browser. But for my daily use, and for most people in here, you're probably not using a proprietary browser anymore. You're probably using Chrome, Firefox, Opera, something in the market. So that's the same kind of concept that we're, we're talking about with open cloud. We don't want people, or we're offering an alternative to proprietary lock-in. Because when an IT company like Marvel or Square Enix or uh, Dell, uh, when they kind of develop a cloud strategy, they've got to spend a lot of money on development, provisioning, resources. And if you do that against proprietary code, um, then you're locked in and you can't really get out of that. It costs you X, Y, Z amount of thousand dollars to say, oh, I had a support problem. Uh, oh, we're Netflix. We developed on top of Amazon EC2, and we were down all Christmas Day. And we really couldn't do anything about it. We didn't have a multiple cloud strategy. We didn't have another place to fail our systems over. What we had was a single proprietary provider that had a major network outage that affected our product in one of the most public spotlights of internet outages you know, known to date. So we're positioning open source, multi-cloud use cases for enterprise level businesses to be able to um, be a little bit more dynamic about where they put their eggs and how many eggs they put into each basket. Um, and that's kind of really what, what we focused on uh, in our portfolio. Now, HP has a big private presence. We're not getting out of the, the business of selling servers and, and you know, going hybrid. and. And we have a lot of high density servers, things like Moonshot, that are coming into the market. Um, <laughs> we're, we're kind of making a converged image, big buzzword in sales words. Um, but we want to also bring to traditional IT people who have you know, existing IT resources. We want to uh, build software and enable them to use the old software. 
and then take this new style of IT, which cloud is the new style of IT, um, and be able to, to use that without having to just totally do away with everything that's private, right? A lot of people have con concerns around security in the cloud. It's a shared uh, portfolio. So governmental use cases, if anyone goes in and, and works for, a, uh, for government, healthcare, um, for anybody that's held under HIPAA compliance, you can have a hard time transitioning them to what makes sense, but they're dealing with private customer data, email records, um, you know, medical information, which is very secure, government, you, know, you, you can have military or, or high sensitivity, even national security kind of things. Um, so it's taking time for the public cloud providers to get certifications like FISMA and HIPAA and PCI compliance that's, that's kind of coming to market. By the time you guys go and get jobs and start pitching IT strategies and portfolios for companies even that are at medical care, by that time, most of that stuff should be ironed out. The pain point is now. Um, we're dealing with it. It's, it's kind of transitioning and coming along. Now, if you want to get involved with some public cloud resources, most of the public cloud providers that are available today have freemium tiers. One Linux server or one Windows server that you can get for six to nine months. Um, I definitely, definitely encourage you to try it. Uh, if you want to try it with HP, you can just come to hpcloud.com. There's a button that says 90 day free trial. Uh, you can get in there. You're not charged for the, the small instance that you use. You can play with Linux. You can play with uh, Windows. You can start learning how am I going to position um, an IT strategy for a startup that I work for? Or do I, if I go work for an enterprise company and they come to me and ask, how do, we, um, how do we get better on our cost? How do we get better on our scalability? How do we get better on our, you know, the time that we're waiting for servers to arrive? This is the solution. And if you have that in your pocket to be able to talk to, it's going gonna, it's gonna to matter. Now, kind of, uh, as I said earlier, um, <coughs> I am from the Valley. I, I was born and raised here. Um, as I kind of left the Valley and went up north, I worked for Rackspace, which is the company that started OpenStack. I worked for Rackspace for five years. Um, and then from Rackspace, I went to Hewlett Packard uh, about two years ago. So I've been with HP for two years. Um, one of the positions that really made it uh, key for me to kind of find, I loved uh, technology when I was young. I had a, a great passion for it. Um, when I was working here in the Valley, I was working for smaller computer mom and pop shops, you know, a bunch of old ones, Micro USA, Comp USA, way back in the day. Um, but as I, as I started working for hosting companies like Rackspace and HP, um, I found a love for Linux. When I, when I was, you know, traditional IT, when I, when I was growing up, I was focused in Windows. Um, there is a lot of jobs and opportunity out there for people with not just Windows expertise, but Linux expertise. Um, the job that I kind of transitioned into, into a Linux world, was called a, a live chat support operator. And that is one of our entry level positions that we hire for at HP Cloud. And we're definitely looking for, um, I mean, we hire from four to five of those guys every couple of months uh, because they get promoted up and they go into different uh, engineering teams and network teams throughout the company. Um, it's something where you, you can start with a, with a base knowledge of internet technology, web hosting technology, um, and it's customer facing. And when you get in there and the customers come to you every day and ask you how to solve, you know, how to solve problems, how to explain to them, how do I get my company up and running? You know, I, I need a WordPress blog. How do I do that? Um, that, that opportunity through, that I worked when I was with Rackspace originally really um, helped me understand the difference between small market IT and enterprise level IT. And that was, that was a, a, a great turning point for me to get with companies that were doing larger things, um, that were working with uh, multinational deployments, uh, promotions, you know, larger kind of scale infrastructure. Um, and I really would encourage you, if anyone's interested for, you know, what am I going to do after I go to college? You know, what am I, you know, I going to transition into? What am I going to specialize into? Um, cloud and Linux are two great specializations. Uh, if you look at the DICE statistics, and I, I don't have it pulled up on the computer, but they are some of the most overpaid uh, individuals within the industry right now. So people with Linux expertise are making 20 to 30 percent more of equivalent Windows experience because there's such a lack in the Linux market as compared to the Windows market. All these kids come out of um, XYZ technical universities with a computer engineering degree, with a development degree, or with a Windows degree uh, to itself, 
but they don't have Linux experience. So these companies are having to hire them, and then it takes transitional time to get them up to speed. I know that myself, it took me, you know, it took me quite a long time to, uh, to kind of get up to scale and figure out how to work around a CLI-based system as opposed to a GUI-based system. Um, but I'm really glad that I did it. It really opened up uh, a new avenue for my career, um, for something that I wanted to do, and, uh, and I've never regretted it since. So I do encourage you to look into some of the cloud technologies that are out there. I encourage you to sign up for us, and if you're looking for work, you know, Please uh, keep us in mind for, for a strategy. And if you guys figure out how to use cloud and go you know, get jobs at larger enterprise companies, think about using us in the future. Thank you. We have time for questions? Or? Does anyone have any questions? Right, I, it's it's switched. I, I think that it's it's a it's a cost basis, right? Where it costs you eighty dollars to get two or three servers up and running, um, as opposed to you know a three hundred dollar desktop that you have under your 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 desk and a forty dollar internet connection, and then you have to have like if I'm running an enterprise application, even as a startup, like firewall rules or you know network traffic you know, network traffic that's coming in. I don't want to have to deal with like ISP caps on you know. And there's, there's, when you do that, you're breaking your internet service provider and user agreement, right? They, they, any consumer-based Roadrunner connection um, has an agreement in there that says you can't host server applications off, off of your internet connection. So if they find out, they can come in and cut your product. And then you've got downtime, and you've got to go and get a, a cloud-based server or a traditional hosted server anyways. So they've, people have had that problem, and now they're realizing that this is the better way. Four hundred bucks a month starting pop at at Rackspace is composed to thirty dollars a month for a VM. That's a three hundred and seventy dollar difference. I mean, they are they are cheap, and there's still use cases for those. It, cloud isn't going to replace traditional IT. Most IT is going to go hybrid. A company like right now, I'm working with Marvel. They're not going to go with a cloud only portfolio or a traditional only portfolio. They're going to have a hybrid model, right? They're going to have certain data that has to stay in their data centers. Companies like Canada have rules about not being able to put data in American data centers because of the Patriot Act. So they won't put business in American data centers. But HP can still make money off of Canada customers if we have data centers in London and in Brazil. Um, London is a big market, UK, Asia. Um, and then you have things like application-specific routing. right? So if I go from a traditional American market and my product starts becoming successful globally, how do I we all know how, what happens when you like sit there for 15 seconds and a page doesn't load. What do you do? Go somewhere else. We, we all have ADHD when it comes to the internet. If your app isn't loading fast, if it doesn't work, you're on the line with customer support or you're going and looking for something else. What open source technology and multi-vendors with large kind of cloud footprints allow you to do is to deploy resources within uh, America, London, UK, Brazil, South America, North America, Antarctica eventually, not yet, but, but eventually. Um, and then you can do something called software-defined networking, where as the customer makes a re request over DNS, it'll actually route it to servers that are more centrally located to them. Um, so when you deploy your application, you don't have to worry about them coming from Hong Kong to a data center in Chicago and pulling, a data, you know, and pulling data across that, because you've got huge latency. Um, traditional IT won't go away, but it's going to be augmented by, you know, by cloud. We run two currently. So there's four OpenStack data centers that are publicly available in uh, America. HP runs uh, Vegas and, and East Virginia. Rackspace runs Dallas Chica and Chicago. Uh, they're soon to add Virginia. And then globally, there are five or six other ones based in London, Hong Kong, um, and a, lot, a little bit of Asia Pacific. But HP is, is at two with, ex, with plans to expand. One of the neat kind of transitional cost performances, um, 
is the industry, Gartner's come out and kind of, kind of done industry reports and talked about people who've transitioned to, to cloud-based IT, and they say for every dollar that you spend in cloud technology, you're saving four in traditional infrastructure costs. So they're talking about a one to four ratio. Because even with traditional servers, you gotta pay the tech to manage them. You've gotta, and this is repeatable work. And, and as technicians and engineers get better and better, it doesn't matter if it's a data center tech, a network tech, a Linux admin, as they get better and better, they become more and more valuable to the company. And it's more and more of a waste to have them out there swapping hard drives out and pulling RAM out of bad boxes. If, you know, how I, how I troubleshoot and fix a traditional box, I gotta go out there, I gotta save the drives, I gotta pull the RAID 5 drives out, I gotta fix whatever me, you know, mechanical issue is wrong with that server, um, put in a new chassis, pop my drives back in, hope that my RAID array didn't get you know, totally destroyed in this outage, and then bring my application back up. In cloud, it doesn't work like that. In cloud, you do 50 distributed nodes, your application is load balanced across those nodes. If one of them dies, you simply take it out of rotation. You make you know, one call, and that node is out of rotation, you don't have to worry about it. You kill that server, you pop a new one in place, and you, you, know, you didn't have to worry about it at all. You can do dynamic balancing, application-based scale. So you can have rules that monitor when traffic, uh, when traffic spikes. Like, anyone been to Reddit? You know, anyone ever had a site on Reddit and just totally just killed it? Like, you know, you're running a small little WordPress blog, you, you wrote something cool, somebody puts it on Reddit or Oprah or it was dig back in the day, you know, <laughs> when you used to get dig. And um, social media will kill your site. Twitter, uh, you know, it'll, it'll kill your site. But with cloud-based provisioning, you don't have to call up your host and work with, you know, getting a larger server. No, you just put a couple of extra nodes behind that in rotation. You can write logic that'll actually scale your application up with the traffic demands and then scale the application back down so that you're only paying for what you use. A couple of I mean, there's a couple of different ways and use cases. Uh, we have encryption, right? So we can do up to AES 256-bit encryption um, for data that's just getting written in flat. Um, if you have a server, we have, you can't do everything base, but we have a network of partners, of channel partners that allow you to do more, right? So for something like that, we have Trend Micro, which will do disk level encryption of the VM. So, so you start a standard VM, it doesn't have any kind of disk protection but you can bring in a, a Trend Micro client and they'll lock that, uh, lock that drive down and that server will actually have to boot, send a DNS request to the Trend Micro server, request the key to unlock the drive so it boots only like the first master boot record and then without that key it won't start. And then the, the, the data on that drive, if I went into that data center and pulled that server out of a rack and pulled the, pulled the hard drive that was related to that server, I'm not gonna be able to read that data. Not that I would, but that's a way that you can secure it. Um, writing the data in flat, you encrypt it, uh, you can compress it as well so that you're working with that. But, but there are different types of things like VPN, right? Like VPN is another way to protect the data where you can firewall, lock it down, and only let, um, only let customers in over a VPN as opposed to letting the entire public internet in. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I mean, do you, do you know what, what disk encryption, like if you, if you had your home server, you can, you know, you can, like Apple has a product as well which does disk encryption. Um, we, can, we can talk more offline or whatnot. I, I didn't mean to speak over your head. <laughs> Sorry, engineering background. I apologize about that. Sure. Yeah. Right. So that happened with a company called Nervonics. Nervonics ran um, an object storage service, which is a cloud backup service, that was OpenStack based. And they, they basically closed their doors. The company said they were going out of business. Now HP is a company that's not going out of business anytime soon, but Nervonics did it. And what customers did was, because they were on OpenStack, they basically just pointed two different endpoints to each other and just sent the data across. So they opened up, we, ha we got a lot of customers from that Nervonics uh, dis disband, they basically opened up accounts with us, sent the data over the network, had everything in there, and then they just canceled their Nervonics accounts and they were up and running with us. So if HP closed its doors, you would do the same thing but with Rackspace or another OpenStack provider in the market. But you can't do that with Amazon. With Amazon, 
if Amazon shuts its doors, you're, you know, you've got to manually pull all your data back into your data center and then resend it up somewhere else. It's part of the part of the advantage of OpenStack. Right, right. So we do a couple of different things. We're, we're doing pen tests every month, like a full suite of pen tests against the host infrastructure. Um, and then we also do scanning in inside of the network of each of the VMs. So sometimes we get brute force attacks. We have an entire security team that, that kind of deals with it. Um, it it's, it's high level. HP has a huge network of brilliant network engineers and security engineers that kind of manage it for you. And that's one of, the, what, one of those competitive differentiators when you talk about clouds that you use. HP's got a large history in IT. Um, you know, newer ones to market like Planet or One and One might not necessarily have that same security backbone. So we're currently finishing our SOX 1 and SOX 2 compliance, which is usually how that goes with enterprise. They don't want to know a lot of the nitty gritty security stuff. They just want to know, do you have PCI compliance? Do you have SOX 1, SOX 2, FISMA? Um, and so once we can prove those certifications, then they come to us and say, okay, you've got this, 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 then we can, you know, we can take your, your, your business. Well, a, pu <laughs> a public cloud is, is a shared network, right? So it's what we call multi-tenant. So there's lots of people living in, the, in those networks. And so it's, it's kind of like a shared environment. So some of the security concern is um, I can talk to the other servers in those environments. So if I was a malicious user, I could um, install some you know, hackery software that would throw a bunch of passwords at other servers in that environment. No. <laughs> There's a, it, it, it changed, it, it, I actually had a Russian customer that we were working with and this was, that was one of his real, his concerns because he was like, in Russia we have KGB members that will literally come into web hosts armed and they will pull you know, drives out and if the drives aren't encrypted, then my data is vulnerable. So we talk about, well, you can do encryption. If anyone comes into our, our Vegas data center and gets your drives, then you're okay. Um, but lit our, our Vegas data, well, all of our data centers are, are literally like guarded by armed security. So f physical security is important. The better your provider, like the, the larger provider that you use, the more secu physical security they're probably going to have. But software is your best friend in that in that manner. Yes. They have they have some yeah like Vegas has M16s guard towers the whole thing. Um, they've got. Like battery and backups was like an old way to, to go through uh, like you know network power outages and stuff like that. They have these huge three ton flywheels that's just a spinning piece of metal that uh, that will actually keep turning based on its mass and inertia, which is enough to keep up like half a data center each wheel um, that's going on. So data center tech is is going up and up. But to buy that yourself is very expensive. That that module is like a 1.2 million dollar module just to have that backup power. To do that yourself. You're not going to do it. But you can consume VMs from HP Cloud that has that level of protection without having to get into that capital expenditure. Cool. Thank you. Hey, guys.